all, this is my Kevin time and you're watching The Lime Guy. So when I first started doing Lime, I made a lot of mistakes. So I wanted to make a video to help you guys kind of get a feel for what starting out with Lime is. So I live in the LA area, that's where I primarily do Lime. So I'm going to point out what I learned. So what you need to start, process of limes, payments, and some common mistakes that you might encounter. So let's ju jump in. So there are different ways to squeeze a lime, what people think, and I kind of put into categories. So the one and done is you just, on the way to work, on the way home, you pick up a bunch of limes, you charge it, and you bring it back the next morning. Simple, right? The multiple offenders is you're just doing it throughout the whole night. Half and half is you're kind of doing it like in the middle. You pick up some, you come back, you pick up some, kind of routine. And then if you know you can't sleep and you just want to do limes, that's up to you. You do whatever you do, right? So each category is important because the one and done, it, you basically need big capacity. The bigger capacity that your car can hold, that means you're holding 20 limes or 30 limes. And crazy if you could hold 40 limes, you know, the more money you're going to make that night, right? There is a limit to how many you can charge, but that will depend on your charger. But for now, the more, more is better, right? Just for now. And this means that if you can pick up 40 in one go, you don't have to drive back and forth, less driving, right? Now the multiple offender, you have a benefit too, because if you have 16 and you come back home with eight chargers and you charge it and then you go out, pick another 16 and someone's at home switching it up, you're charging 16 while you're out, pick it up another 16. So you're wasting no time getting those chargers right back out. And the half and half is kind of a combination of both, but it's okay. You know what I mean. So let's talk some money, right? Lying for cash. And if you have the one and done, you're gonna probably start off with 15 an hour. It's not bad, but I mean, you're just picking up lines and charging it, right? Now, this means that you're taking two hours to do this, okay? This is a rough estimate, because if you're on the way from work, it may take you an hour to do this, and you're gonna make a lot of money that way. But this is just a good estimate, a safety margin for you. But if you pick up 10 limes, even if you're not coming from work, you can still make 30 to bucks an hour, which is not bad, not bad at all. Now, if you're a multiple offender, you can notice that if you pick up 10 limes, 20 limes, 30 limes, as the hours increase, because I'm saying that one hour is dedicated to your last drop off, right? The rest of the hours is pure pick up and coming back, right? So if you pick up 10 every hour after the first hour, that means your dollar amount per hour increases. And you see from 20 to 40, 45. So it's better to be a multiple offender, right? Now, before you squeeze limes, it you're like, let me jump into this because it's, it's awesome. I think it's great. It's the future. Or maybe you just hate it, right? Limes are heavy and there are different sizes. If we could jump back real quick from the beginning, you notice that the one on the left is a lot longer than the one on the right, the most right, or the one in the middle, right? Far right is what I mean. So because they're different sizes, the smaller one is more condensed. So you're gonna get a heavier weight pulling you down when you squat, right? So, you know, but the benefit of this is that when you put it in the car, you're not gonna hit a lot of things because the handlebar will move, right? It will move because you can turn left and right with it. But when you put it in the car, imagine it going like this and then it gets stuck on another thing and it gets stuck in the middle or it gets caught in, in another. And I'm sorry I deal with my hands, but that's the best thing I can do, right? It gets caught, it, it sucks, and you have to pull it out and it, it's a pain. So um, yes, it's gonna suck putting those lines in, but don't worry. You have to get through with it. I got through with it, right? Now, limes can be dirty. Sometimes they're in the bush. They, people throw them around. Sometimes they smell. Sometimes they've uh, been on a sprinkler. Sometimes they're just on the street randomly and you don't know if they're dirty or not. Whatever it is, you should be cautious of this. And because of the turning and how dirty it is and how there's so many exposed parts like the wheel, the handle, you, you might hit your car, end up scratching your car. When you put it in, you might scratch your roof. When your car is moving and you make a quick break, you know, the limes tend to move and they might scratch the side of your car. So these are all things to consider 
when you pick up lines, right? So if you don't mind that, the next part is uh, it would be beneficial for you to, for as a multiple offender to live at least 20 minutes away or less. The closer you are, the better. But 20 minutes is a good ETA because let's say you pick up all the limes in your area and you want to move out. Well, at least you know any lime 20 minutes around you is a good pickup, right? Because there there's going to be other limes in the way for you to pick up and come back. Now, if that's a problem with you, you can always just have a large uh, vehicle that has a that can put a lot of limes in. So you have 20 in one night and you just go home, charge, and come back in the morning. That's not too bad either. Um, and the rule of thumb, for me at least, is that you at least have a vehicle that can carry up to two times the amount of your chargers. Because sometimes you get home and you're going to be charging, and let's say they all are 70%, which means that it's a rel relatively quick charge. Well, are you just going to go to sleep and then wake up in the morning? You know, when you're still awake, you could have charged another batch, right? So you want to at least pick up double what you did. So if I had four chargers, I pick up eight, right? Now, picking up lines. When you get there, if you're commuting at least 20 minutes away, don't expect it to be there. Someone's going to pick it up. Someone's going to use it. It's going to get served. If the lime says $7 a lime, then it's okay. A lot of limes come up for $7. It's the same as 6 and if anything is above 850 around there, that you should be cautious because those lines are very difficult to find. Now you can find them if you're good at finding stuff, you know, in the wilderness or whatever. Um, but some of these lines may be located in someone's home. They may be behind some gate, some fence. And what you do on the app is you have this thing called ring. And if you click the ring button, basically it'll allow you to hear the scooter make a noise. And usually the noise is very reliable, but if not, sometimes you can't hear it. it. It can be quiet. It can be a very quiet noise. And the dangerous thing about picking up lines is sometimes you don't know where you're going to be at. Maybe it's an alley. Maybe it's uh, you know on the street. Maybe it's in um, a high traffic area. And sometimes you have to block traffic in order to pick up the scooter or at least park almost a block away so if you're willing to risk it and pick it up that's not me to decide that's not me to encourage but that is something that might occur or if you just skip it all that may be something that you could lose on your time to earning ratio so now that um, you picked up limes you can tell on this uh, right side I, I'm blocking it a little bit but don't worry this is a report damage from my app, and you can tell that there are ways to report it. So the QR code at the top, that little uh, square, that's where your number code for the line is. It's usually you know, a couple digits long, and then your address or where you picked it up. And then the bottom is what you would put your complaint would be. So there is a problem. Sometimes you're coming up to pick up limes, and all of a sudden, you're just like, man, it's unavailable. And I don't really understand too well why it becomes unavailable, but this happens a lot. So think about it, if every time it takes me three minutes to get to the next line, and then I come there and it's like, boom, unavailable, or broken, red wrench, icon flashing, I can't do anything about it. So if it's unavailable, I leave it there, I can't serve it. If it's loud and beeping, then I can bring it to the main hub for $4. And if I'm not close, that's kind of, uh, so you know, that's a lot of money that you're losing as well. Now, you want to know the cost, right, of charging a line. Line puts an estimate from $0.10 cents to $0.20. Cents. And you can check this out for yourself with the billing. It takes about three hours to charge. If you find a line that's 50%, it's obviously half of that. So I would say that 70% limes are your go-to. Always try to pick up the limes that are almost charged. Um, you don't get paid unless it's above 90%. That is something that I roughly estimate. I don't really know the numbers. But the key goal is it has to be 95% charged, otherwise you won't get paid in full. I've had a situation where I didn't get paid in full. So if you don't charge it all the way, let's say you pick up seven, 
and you have seven in the car and it's seven dollars each, you get zero for $49. It sucks, but it's something that happened to me. Don't let it happen to you. Now, then you have to drop off the limes. So when you drop off the lime, they'll tell you that today usually is 7 a.m. that you need to drop it off. So when you get there to the location, there's hundreds of locations. There are going to be two, three, and five. Two, three, and five, meaning that there's two spots for your lime scooters, three spots, five spots. Five is a little bit off, but like a little bit rare. But it, there are spots. You lay them, you follow instructions, really easy. You take you first, you put them up, log them in, take a picture, then you're done. Everything's good. Lime will give you a support ticket if you did it wrong. Drop off requirement is 7 a.m., but they still do accept limes if it's after 7 a.m. They may not pay you in full. They may they may do pay you in full. I don't know. It's up to them. But there are penalties if you do it consistently. So don't do it consistently. But no, if you're close to 94, 95, you might want to risk it. But I don't encourage it. Try not to get there, right? So my advice, my complete advice to you as a starting juice is have a car that you can pick up at least 10 comfortably. That will give you the most for your, bet, for your buck, right? Otherwise, you're one and done. Guaranteed. Don't even try. Decide whether you'll pick up once or multiple in the night. If you pick up once, good. Less time driving. If you pick up more, more time spent trying to earn money. If you pick up eight, or I'm sorry, if you pick up as many as your charger, at least make it double times. So if you have eight chargers, pick up 16, return, come back, do it again. Lay a sheet for your scooters. Track your mileage, treat it as a business, uh, either sleep in cycles or don't sleep at all until you're finished. And of course, uh, try and line with four charges and increase if you like it. Now, I believe that's the end of my video. And I want to let you know if you have any questions, feel free to comment and then like, subscribe if you like the material. I will definitely try to answer you and good luck juicing. I hope you have a wonderful time with less mistakes. Hopefully you learned something new. Take care, you guys. Peace. Good luck.